So it finishes Manchester City 3, Aston Villa 1. Villa lose a much predictable result for Aston Villa going away from home against a Manchester City team looking to get a bounce back from Tottenham Hotspur last week. Um, really disappointing. You know, first half, we don't look really that good at all. Um, you can see not three goals. What was it in... Not three goals in one more, about three goals in five minutes. <laughs> we can see in the first goal within five minutes um, from a really poor set piece. Uh, Kamara again losing his man and not really having a great game. Uh, giving Rodri the ability to get that header into the near post. Um, and then going on then, Callum Chambers. You know, we're coming into this game, seeing him in the starting lineup and no Tyra Mings. And it's a, bit, it's a little bit shaky at that point. Just some really poor laps of concentration there. And it's just a simple tapping from Gundogan at the back post. And then a really soft penalty from Jack Grealish diving again. You know, you see all over Twitter saying if it, if he was still a Villa player committing this challenge, um, you know, Villa fans would have been complaining. But you would be because Villa fans know that some of the fouls that he gains aren't fouls. They're just, that's just how he plays. And ultimately the penalty that he did get, there's nothing in it. It's a dive and... He's ultimately killed the game there in the first half. But really, for me, what kind of changes it, I'm not as much disappointed with, is in the sense that in the second half, we gave it much more much more of a go. There's a lot more effort behind it. The substitutions really helped change it as well. Um, it's just really disappointing to see us... Like with, like, with those substitutions, it's clear to see who needs to be starting within this team. And from that, what we can actually get out of this. Because although probably... Man City were there thinking, we don't really need to focus about the game as much. It's more so towards Wednesday against Arsenal. Um, it's all about Villa trying to have a go here. And ultimately, getting a goal back in the 16th minute with Ollie Watkins. Nice bit of play from Duran, trying to get the ball back from uh, City's half. A nice ball into Ollie Watkins. He bullies off two defenders and is able to just slot it in to the post for 3-1. Um, but apart from that, really, they, they, t- yeah, they grew out the game. Uh, City really stayed resilient defensively. Apart from a really nice Duran attempt in the last minute of the game, there's nothing really much more for Villa. Um, and ultimately, it's a defeat there. So it's not as bad in the sense that it, the team's clearly capable of doing it. It just needs the right starting lineup. It needs the right players. And overall, again, looking towards the summer, it clearly shows who needs to be here and not. Some of the players, Callum Chambers, as I, said, as I mentioned, he's not really a first-team player, is he? He's not going to be more than a bench warmer. Um, so in that case, you might as well just get rid of him. We've only paid two million, so it's not much of a loss in any regards. Leon Bailey, I'm already getting to the point now where I'm just sick of watching him. It's just a lack of consistency in his play. He constantly looks fed up. The fact that he's got a one-on-one chance, he's been brilliantly tackled down by Rodri, and he's trying to proclaim a foul. Like, mate, you're rubbish, you're having a poor game again, you can't accept it, just get up and move along with it. And it's just really infuriating to watch him now in the sense that Duran comes on for about 20, 30 minutes and for a 19-year-old who's not ever played in the Premier League or anything at this level, the amount that he brings going forward is so much more exciting to watch than Bailey than it's like, what is the point of watching Bailey? You know, Alex Moreno coming on, there's a lot more enthusiasm, a lot more energy going on to that left-hand side, linking up with... Whoever's going to be playing out wide sometimes with Ollie Watkins, or in this case when McGinn came on, the nice link of play between there. Ultimately showing that when we're playing against teams like Manchester City, if we play that quicker intensity of football, we're actually going to be able to match City going forward and getting that goal like we did. Um, and yeah, just overall, there's just a lack of depth as well. It's, it's, it's easily fixable. You just sign some better players. Obviously, players from that first team come on to the bench. We're going to have players coming back as well. We've still got Troy to come back, even though it's not really going to make much of an impact. Um, it's all about just just going away with a performance. Like, nine times out of a ten. Was you expecting Villa to win, Mr. Yeah. Person? No. He was not expecting Villa to win. I'm not expecting Villa to win. Um, it's just the fact that I just want to see something a bit like last season where we can go 2-0 up at half-time or whatever it was and show that we can do this against the top teams. We've done this against Tottenham. We had a really great result there. We've done it against Manchester United at home. It's just about consistency and overall not really rolling over in the first half and overall having that game and saying, you know what, for a good majority of it, we were the better team. We had some great chances it just needs to be a bit more ruthless today. In terms of players, they knew who I'd say man of the match was. I didn't think I think Conza had quite a good game. 
you know, as I said, without Tyron Mings, that physical presence in the air, there's still no Diego Carlos, and there's not really another backup option in that position. I think um, Conte had a really good game. Um, Watkins does his job as well. He's trying to bully out City's defence. Um, sometimes working here or there, but when you're playing against the, the likes of Ruben Diaz, um, Rodri as well, Kanji, sometimes Bernardo Silva, when he, he was having to come back, you know, he's trying his best, and ultimately for him, in the sense of getting that goal, it's at least something positive to come out from it. Um, but really, just the just disappointing, and ultimately just highlighting where the club needs to be strengthening in the window. You know, for me personally, I don't want to see us spending fifty million on an Eco Williams when that's not what we need. We don't need somebody that is about a fifty million pound player but doesn't have the quality. You know, it's a, it's e we were discussing this the other day. It's easy to spend 50, 60 million and expect to be getting quality. But, you know, we've spent big money on Bailey. He's not really much delivered since his time here. Coutinho, although, he kept, although he's had some it iffy bits of moments, there is quality. They only showed it today. He had a real good sense of enthusiasm about him. I just want us to sometimes look at a profile and say, well, we could spend this much and go on sort of a name value. Or we can look at this much, which is definitely cheaper but also find a gem like with what McGinn was. He was only costing two million to sign from um, the Scottish Premiership. Can't remember the team stuff, but um, but look how well he's flourished into a player ever since signing him in twenty eighteen. You know, sometimes we don't have to spend big money to get big players. Um, it's just about monitoring a player properly, perhaps find that's a better sporting director than what we have, and actually be able to see what would fit with the team. Um, but it is what it is, isn't it? It's nothing to really go crazy about. Villa will still stay 11th place currently. And considering our next game is Arsenal next Saturday, we've got to hope that in some ways City could get a win, possibly a draw. No. A draw? No. Anything, something. Try and have, some, try and have something tangible to work with next Saturday because you don't want to be playing Arsenal, a team that are trying to still go for the league but now three points adrift from Manchester City and only five points away from Manchester United. So it would be nice to see Villa do something at home, but considering Arsenal's form, I'm not really expecting much either there as well, but you never know. It's something to go off then. It's the games after that. Everton, Crystal Palace, West Ham and Bournemouth. There are four games there that are potentially winnable games there, 12 points there. So you've got to wonder if we can do it, now would be a time just get out the system for Arsenal at least get something there and then we go again for those next games after that but yeah that's ultimately the instant match reaction leave in comments down below what you thought on the social pages but we will see you for the Arsenal game up the Villa with the pride of Villa we'll see you next time boys